Hello, and thanks for joining us here on Encore. Coming up on today's show. Sexuality, religion, politics, and deep-seated frustrations. Razia is a snapshot of Moroccan society in crisis, and the city it's set in is a far cry from the Casablanca of Bogart and Bergman. After sparking controversy with 2015's Much Loved, director Nabil Ayush has teamed up with screenwriter and leading lady Mariam Tuzani for this latest film. They're here to tell us more. Nabil Mariam, thanks so much for joining us today. Now, your latest film, Razia, has plenty of characters, different plot twists, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I'd just like to ask about its name, Razia. That word brings to mind an attack or an ambush. Why did you choose that word to sum up the mood of the film? Razia, originally, is an Arabic word, or Ghazwa. And it's the fact of going in another territory, physical territory, geographical territory, but in Razia, in my film, it's more of a mental territory, and taking something from this person. And I think that you don't take something that is not yours without any consequences. One day or another, this person will come and ask you to give it back. That's what we see in the film. Okay, impunity, perhaps. Well, let's take a look at a clip from Razia in which the character that you play, Mariam, has some tough decisions to face. Hamla. Mariam, you co-wrote the film with your husband Nabil and also took on one of the re leading roles, Salima, who we saw just there. Now, as a writer, you had the chance to shape her identity. So for you, what was the most important thing to say in Salima's story? The most important thing to say for me was um, uh, the struggle of this woman who could no longer exist in the public space because this public space no longer belonged to her, but belonged to to, to men and uh, was becoming smaller every day. And it was becoming harder for her to exist, to exist as a human being uh, in the eyes of everybody. This is what I wanted to talk about because this is something that I, as a Moroccan woman today, feel. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard. Now, you have a background in screenwriting, but I believe this is the first time uh, in front of the camera in a, in a leading role. How did you approach that? There was something very, very uh, beautiful because something very true in the fact of playing Salima. Because like I was saying before, Salima and I have a lot of things in common. There's a lot of things that I felt uh, I wanted to give a voice to through writing this character. And later, acting this part was quite natural because it was uh, somewhat a prolongation of, uh, of the same thing. So, uh, so there was something very, very, very natural, very beautiful, very meaningful. Okay. Now, Nabil, the characters we meet in Razia all seem to be suffering in some way from some sort of marginalization, whether that's to do with sexuality, religion or, or gender. Your film traces that back to a social political shift at the beginning of the 19th. 80s. How would you describe that shift and what were its consequences in your opinion? It's a story that we have never been told about. It's how we can change the destiny of more than a country, of a region, because of this educational system reform. This reform happened in Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, and uh, forced a world generation of young people to be taught in Arabic, classical Arabic, uh, whether their original language is not classical Arabic. And in the same time, we took up the humanities, philosophy, sociology from the program. And you can see now, 30 years after, how this youth is in loss of uh, direction in their everyday life. And we do hear uh, those different languages in the film, French, Arabic and Berber dialects as well. How did you want to use those languages in the film? 
You know, Morocco is a country that has been built on cultural diversity. There were Berber at the very early ages, and they're still Berber. Jews, Arabs, Muslims, Christians, um, African Sub-Saharians. And this mosaic built the country through the languages, the different languages. And I wanted to show how those languages can be an identity for the characters and also a border, a frontier. Mm -hmm. Now, today artists are increasingly speaking out against the more conservative fringes of Moroccan society. For example, author Lila Slimani has criticized what she sees as a hypocrisy of attitudes towards women, virginity uh, specifically, and sexuality. Um, Mariam, do you see these critical voices, yours included, as pushing things in a different direction? Absolutely. I think, above all, that they're essential. I think that we need to have examples of strong women in Arab societies in order to, to, to be inspired and to also uh, uh, give, be, be uh, given the example that we actually need to, to, to attach ourselves to and to find the courage that we, that we hardly find sometimes to move on and to, to change our destiny. I think that uh, Leila Slimani uh, brings something very interesting because um, her thought is, uh, and is very built and uh, is very truthful. And what she has to, to say is, uh, is very meaningful. And I think we really need to hear it. And it's, and it's equally important for women in the Arab world to make their voices heard, to say the things they need to say, and to say it openly in order to be able to inspire other women. Mm -hmm. Now, indeed, Moroccan women's rights and their struggles, day-to-day -day realities were at the heart of your previous film, Nabila, 2015's Much Loved, which focused on the sex industry in Marrakesh, the young women who work in it. And that film whipped up a huge storm of controversy. It was celebrated in foreign countries, but it was banned in Morocco. You even received death threats, I believe, about it. In what way did that film cast a shadow over your next project, which was Razia? There's many ways to get out from such an experience, much loved. Um, I felt the hate, the violence um, of what I've heard um, was really hard to live with. And Mariam and I, we passed this moment without knowing what would come next. And what came next is a willing to understand how this hate, how this ignorance could come from. So we wanted to go back at the very early origin of uh, this mindset that we observe today, this kind of oppression that is telling you as a woman or as a minority, sexual minority or religious minority, how you should be, how you should act in the public spaces. And that's what we've done in Razia through five characters who are struggling, struggling every day for their, for their rights, actually. Mm. Now, Lubna Abidar, one of the film's leading actresses, she was physically attacked and threatened as a result of Much Loved, mainly because of this idea of presenting an unacceptable image of a Moroccan woman. Mariam, your character in Razia is also someone who's not submissive. She, she speaks her mind. Um, were you worried about the consequences that might have for yourself or your Absolutely career? not. Absolutely not. I was... Um, it had the opposite effect on me. It gave me even more uh, of a desire to, to defend these things which I defend in my everyday life. And to be able to do it in the open through a film uh, was something very, uh, that felt very empowering also for me as a woman because once again, I felt that I could make my voice heard to all these other women, and I could give them a voice as well. Mm -hmm. Now, as well as the central characters in the film, uh, Radziev features scenes of political protest, dissatisfied young Moroccans uh, speaking out against the socio-economic status quo in the country. Those protests were based on real events in 2015. And in terms of hopes for reform, for economic progress, people's aspirations, are you optimistic about the future of Morocco? And protest about inheritance that we see in the film and in which I was pretty sad, I should say, to see that the leading parts of those protests in the real life were women. 
will protest against their own rights. That was a, a law to change the, uh, her the inheritance uh, Absolutely, process. And, and promote the equality in, 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 in heritage. Now, this could make me very hopeless to see that women are protesting against their own rights and could sometimes be their worst enemies. But in the other time, I want to see other women in the Arab world, in Morocco. I want to see Mariam. I want to see Salima, I want to see Ito, those women in the film, who are strong, strong enough to decide what future they would like to bring and how they should educate their children and what place they want to take in the society. I want to see those women, and those women give me hope. Okay. Now, finally, we asked you to tell us about your cultural highlight of the moment, and you've named a film as well. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Now, it's done really well in the recent awards season. What is it about this film that convinced you? The revenge. I love revenge movies. I loved uh, Clint Eastwood, uh, Impitoyable, <laughs> which was also a great film about revenge, and the acting of Francis McDormand, which I discover in the Cohen Brothers movies, and which I think in this Three Billboards is absolutely fantastic. And I believe you voted as a member of the Academy. Uh, you voted for it this year. I voted for Three Billboards, and another movie that I also love very well is The Shape of Water of Guillermo del Toro. Okay, super. We'll finish with that. Mariam Nabil, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. We'll leave you with a clip of three billboards. Do remember to check out our website. You can also keep up with Encore on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. My daughter Angela was murdered seven months ago. It seems to me the police department is too busy torturing black folks to solve actual crime. What the hell is this? Dixon, I'm in the middle of my goddamn Easter dinner. Sorry, kids. I know, Chief, but I think we got kind of a problem. Sunshine leading on a good time. I'd do anything to catch your daughter's killer. I don't think those billboards is very fair. The time it took you to get out here whining like a bitch, Willoughby. Some other poor girl's probably out there being butchered right now.